big society in action in uh, Parliament Square, and uh, if the government does nothing else, it, 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 uh, it's explained to what the big society is, because it's mobilised so many groups of people against so much that they're doing. I just want to say uh, three things uh, here today. The, the first is that I think we've already won the argument on its merits. Now that may not be surprising given the fact we have uh, the support of everybody from the, uh, the most uh, basic jobbing legal, legal aid lawyer, like what I used to be, um, up to the, the people who are sometimes sitting behind us. Uh, the Justice the Supreme Court who come out very strongly in favour of uh, legal aid. <clears throat> it was a great privilege to be marching through here on the legal aid walk uh, three weeks ago with Baroness Hale, both of us wearing Habits of the Fulham Community Law Centre t-shirts. And uh, it's good that everybody within the legal profession has done that. And it's not perhaps surprising that uh, with advocacy like that, we can win all the arguments. We can show that actually, if you do want to cut, there are much better alternatives to cut, as the Law Society and Sound Off for Justice has shown. We've shown that cutting in the way they're doing will actually cost more money in the long run. And we've shown that the impact of the cuts they choose to make will impact most of all on women and on children and on the most vulnerable in society. And against that, the government has not engaged with this debate at all. Uh, for those of you who heard uh, Jonathan Ginogli, the Legal Aid Minister, on, the, on uh, Radio 4 this week, uh, Justice Raw had a, uh, an item on uh, uh, you and yours, and he was asked to respond. He didn't respond to any of the points that they made or I just made. He went back to saying, as he did six months ago, we have the most expensive legal aid system in the world and we will be protecting the most vulnerable. Arguments that were completely debunked, completely debunked at the beginning of the campaign. And why do they why do they not engage? Why do they not take on the arguments that we've used? I think partly because they can't, and partly because they think they can get away with it. They think that uh, legal aid is not the NHS, it's not forests. They think even within the Ministry of Justice uh, responsibilities that prisoner voting or sentencing policy is more likely to catch the attention of the tabloids. And at the same time, in a quite disreputable manner, they feed stories to the same tabloids about abuse of legal aid or about compensation culture. And that is what we're up against. And it is a formidable task. But the final thing I would say is this is not the end. This is the beginning of that process. We will have the speech from Cameron in a week or so's time about how the government is tough on crime. And under cover of that, we will have the responses to the legal aid and the sentencing green papers, and then immediately afterwards the bill. And it's then my and my colleagues' jobs in committee to try and challenge the bill on the detail where they can't get away from that. And I know that you will all assist us in that process. Uh, but after it's gone through the Commons, and I have to be honest, we don't expect to win a, a, a lot of votes in the Commons, it will go to the Lords, and my colleague Willie Bark, Lord Bark, will take over, and he's at a similar protest to this in Coventry today, and we will take it all through the Lords, clause by clause, week by week as well. And I do believe we can win the battle, and I do believe that, at the end of the day, a right will be on our side. It's not just I think we can win, I think we have to win, because we're seeing the most sustained attack on not just the welfare state, but on everything that makes this a civilised country, whether it's public housing, whether it's welfare benefits, whether it's the NHS. And alongside that, at the same time, and by no coincidence, we are seeing an attack on legal aid, which is what gives people a voice, otherwise powerless people a voice, to challenge uh, on all of those issues to those services which are being removed from people on a day-to-day and month-by-month basis. So that's why for me, at the end of the day, not as a lawyer, but as a constituency MP representing a very poor constituency in London, this is absolutely vital as a campaign. And I would end by saying the Sound Off for Justice, the Justice for All, the Women's Institute, and to all the organisations that have come together here, CAB, you're doing a fantastic job, but you know you're doing it because it's an essential job, and a job, and, a, and I believe in the end that we can win, and we can save legal aid in this country. Thank you very much.